So everybody's asking about how I'm using push and taking a track idea into a finished composition. So I wanted to demonstrate the concept that I'm using. Now, I did try to make a video from scratch, but the music was just rubbish. And sometimes it does happen that way. So I'm gonna be using something that I have built up, but I wanna tell you about how I did this, all right? So I started off with the main elements on the first track. And so I'm gonna show you what I've got. So that was the first thing that I did. I programmed that clip in, so that's the beat. Then I pushed duplicate, which basically then took that clip and everything else that might have been up there. I mean, there was nothing there, of course, and created a brand new scene. So these buttons here represent the scenes. So scene one, scene two, three, four, and so on. So my second scene was the same beat, but I recorded, I overdubbed something new. So let me show you. So we've got an extra hi-hat on there, okay? So then I pushed duplicate to create a new scene with the same element, and this time, this is what I added. So that was the bass and the chords. Then I added a vocal after pushing duplicate. So this is the process. You record a clip, then you push duplicate, you record a new clip, and then maybe add a new track and add another element. And that's the way it works, building this up row by row. And each one of these is generally a progression based on what you had before, something more complicated, all right? So if you start off with a beat, very likely you're gonna add something musical after that. Very likely you're gonna add on the next scene something extra musical and so on, all right? So I progressed it through here. Okay, so you can see there are additional elements that are coming in. Yeah, you can see on the screen on the actual Ableton software, much more clearly you can see the fact we've got the names of the elements here. Push is showing a representation of that. And once you've learned your composition, it's very easy to start pushing these buttons over here and seeing what comes up. And what I really like about this approach is that, yes, it's reasonably linear because we're thinking about a track from beginning to end as top to bottom, but we have the freedom to try ideas out. And one of the things that I found about this is, is that sometimes what I think is a good structure isn't so good, and just by flipping around here and trying ideas out, I get something new. Let me show you the concept, right? So if I come down here, um, let me go a little transition from where we were. We're gonna go into another section, which is just transposed, and then we come over here where we've got some extra elements. And um, let me show you. So we're gonna switch down a gear. That was a little abrupt. Needed some kind of crash or signifier. Something to show that something was gonna come up that's different. And here we go. So that's nice, and then, and here's what I could do. I could flip back onto that if I thought that was good. And think about the other elements that I could add at this point, and then back in. Pushing down arrow here to take a look at the next available scenes. We could flip between these again. Try ideas out. And even the section where I've got just a vocal on its own. Then back in. I missed it. But you see what I mean? It's more of a kind of DJ style approach to composition. I find that way more exciting than just sitting down and dragging a structure out these days. That's the real benefit for push um, for me. Um, in having push, it's the fact that I can do that, okay? So, let me show you how this works. So obviously the hardware here I'm gonna be using to do stuff, but I wanna show you in the software, if I was to push tab, we have this arrangement view, okay? So this is where we can record all of those changes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the stop up here, so you can see the counter here 
for the bars is one. And I'm going to push record in a second. And that's going to start recording into the arrange view anything that's being triggered here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my first scene. And that's going to be triggered. So watch what happens. I'm going to do this. I'm going to record something in. And I'm going to appraise it afterwards, all right? So you can see this building up. I'm going to switch over after eight bars. So that means that bar nine here. So I need to push just before. Get ready, switch. You can see the new clip being recorded in. I also seem to be recording the string in. That's because this record enables on. So I turn that off. Get ready to switch. Oh, but I don't want the organ. When I said I didn't want the organ, I actually quite like how that's come out. I'm going to turn on that bass now. Get ready. So that's improvised. I didn't plan on that, but I actually quite like that. Get ready to switch to the next scene here. Now what I'm thinking is, is that I need crashes or effects to signify certain sections. So I'm going to put them in after. I'm just going to use what I've got here as a bare framework to start off with. Working nicely. Switch again. And I think we could probably do something like this. I'm going to mute this. So you see what I did there? I muted the beats and then triggered the next scene. And I'll also get a sense of maybe some things are feeling a bit too repetitive. And this is because I'm playing it at the moment and just vibing with it. So let's get switching now. So I'm going to switch on to the next scene here. Let's try that mute again. Next row, I'm going to do my muting again. That works nicely. I'm probably going to do the same again now. So it's bad timing, but I can correct that after. And I'm going to do that vocal a cappella thing that I did before. Here we go. We'll do it on the next time round. There we go. Some crash symbols would help here. Okay, so now I'm ready to come back up. Here we go. And probably what I'm feeling here is that I need to have some new element maybe on the drums. And I'm going to really just go through that whole sequence again. Here we go. Maybe use the mute again. I think we need that string. Push the wrong one there. Let's find a string, it's here. So you look, you get the picture, all right? And I'm gonna show you. We've got here an arrangement that we can go in and start 
basically embellishing. So when I say that, I'm talking about adding some things like crash symbols, um, sweeps, different textures that really start finalizing this. And then also getting in there and getting into the details and maybe working on things like these mutes, getting the timing correct, you know, because you can see here that I had that, you know, it was just literally on the fly. I could get these locked in, get the grid quantized and get those snapping nicely. Um, or even just these, use those as a reference point and then start cutting the clip. All right, so just doing this sort of thing, taking it out. Um, so that's the vibe. And, um, you know, it would take a long time of fine tuning um, to get this correct. You know, these kind of musical ideas, I get down very, very quickly. And I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well. Um, so you want to keep that kind of momentum going with the excitement of getting the ideas in. Um, push is really good for that. So just keeping yourself kind of excited, motivated. Get all of as many scenes as you can up using that duplicate start building up these new sections flip it around on the fly see what comes out and then afterwards you can go and finalize the arrangement and you know that's the thing that i think in all honesty takes longer okay so what i'm going to do at some point in the future is i will do a deconstruction video of this and um, i'll show you exactly what i did to finish it off okay so um watch this space for the moment though that's the approach, it's building up clips, using duplicate, creating a new scene, building up those scenes, and then flipping these things on the fly whilst you've got record running into that arrangement view.